Violence against children is on the rise as a result of the impact of COVID-19. UNICEF South Africa and its child protection partners say children are facing violence and abuse at horrific levels. Childline South Africa has reported an increase of almost 37% in calls for help in August this year compared to the same period last year. The warning comes as child protection and child rights experts are currently holding a virtual Africa Child Trauma Conference today and tomorrow. One of the participants in this conference, which is underway, is UNICEF South Africa's boss, that's Maker Heibrechts. She's uh, very kindly agreed to step out of the virtual conference to talk to us at this hour. We really appreciate your time, Ms. Heibrechts. I mean, the numbers are, are horrific. This virtual conference that's currently underway, what is it in fact discussing that will improve the protection of children into the future? Well, thank you so much for having me this morning. Um, it's a great honor for us to talk about the conference with all the viewers. It's very important to understand what has happened to the children over the last six months being affected by the pandemic and consequent lockdowns as uh, millions of children have become hungry as a result of closure of the schools as well as um, um, exposed to online violence and protection by moving to virtual learning and then uh, their parents and caregivers many of them have lost their livelihoods and children had to witness that distress as well as um, we have seen more, you know, fear, anxiety expressed by children. So what we are doing is we are looking at the global commitments, the regional commitments and the national commitments. So minister speaking as we speak. And we just had the special rapporteur to the Secretary General on Violence Against Children this morning just laying the screen of what we need to do at a global, continental and national level while building on the speeches of all the experts of child rights and child protection activists over the coming two days to come to an action plan tomorrow. Last year we had a trauma conference that led to a charter, leave no child behind. And now we need to action that into an accountability framework with commitments at the global level, at national and regional level to demonstrate that accelerated action is needed to create a nurturing care framework for children in their homes, with their caregivers, and by all duty bearers um, at all levels. Now, Ms. Heibrecht, you are saying that tomorrow you expect that conference will develop and come out with an action plan. I would assume that that action plan is going to have a, 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 a flavor that says emergency. Am I wrong? Because this is a global crisis of huge proportions. And as yeah. you said, families are under huge stress due to COVID-19. Yes, that's correct. So it is indeed the stress that the We seem to have lost the co connection there with uh, Micah Heibrach. She heads up UNICEF in South Africa. Uh, are, are, you, are, you, are you there? Okay, the connectivity is now unfrozen. Uh, you can continue, uh, uh, Ms. Heibrach. What were you saying? So the, to demonstrate the levels of, of, of distress that families have experienced and the impact it has had on children, as children really bear the brunt of this crisis nationally, continentally, but also globally as having been in lockdown for so long and experienced and witnessed a lot of fear and distress, it's important that this action plan demonstrates the commitments we can make at global, continental and national level for children to create a nurturing care framework whereby we lay down actions for parents and caregivers, duty bearers at the district level, laws, policies, capacity of social work, judiciary, police, um, child and youth care workers, faith-based movements, the, um, the entire private sector. So it is the first time tomorrow that the corporate is part of this conference to really demonstrate that we can build with the state a social compact to accelerate investments in well-being of young people, to make sure that there is a safe and nurturing environment. But not, that's not enough. We need to make sure children's voices are here, that they participate, that they have a pathway to the future and that we lend a hand and create hope, skills 
and opportunities for young people to move from adolescence to adulthood. And that's where we build the social compact with the corporate. The action plan is going to be presented to New York, to African Union, to Minister, the social corporate, uh, the social compact to the corporate. And we are very, very excited that we have the media on board with yourselves civil society, all activists, we are moving in order to make sure that no child is left behind and the time is now as the level of suffering children have experienced and are experiencing is too high for us to continue like this. So it's really important that we put children first, we nurture care and love and protect them, make sure they continue their learning journey in a positive and prosperous way and that we build a prosperous nation where every child is safe, cared for and protected. It sounds like a very holistic and integrated action plan. I would love to interrogate it further once it's approved, Ms. Okay. Heibrechts, with yourself and maybe your partners, but we'll have to make an arrangement for that. Thank you for now. You need to go back to the virtual conference. We appreciate okay. you taking a short time to talk to us here on ENC. And all the best in finalizing that action plan, which I promise we will discuss further here on ENCA.